25 cars would make the start of race number two. The only drivers missing were Burley, Selden and Nick Sutton. And thankfully Mark Diath had fixed his car and was joining from the back looking to see how far he'd get up the field. So it'd be Alex Sidwell making a good start, setting some steady pace at the front as the Bradleys would battle behind. But it's quite a spread out start for this one, not really 2 by 2 formation, but they'll get to the line anyway. Lights go out and the second CMMC Super Sloot and Tim Top race is underway. And immediately it is the big booming Holden V8 that heads down towards Richie's for the first time, but he knows that both of the BMWs behind are much better on the brakes and through the corners. Whoops, does that poor wrestler going off the road? It is. He did that at the uh, complex in race number one, but off the road has gone Paul Rostell. He's going a bit too over-eager into Richie's corner there. Couldn't quite get the car stopped. He might need some new brake pads for that, or just new brakes in general. Uh, either way, the two BMWs are already starting to try and gang up on the Holden Commodore through the corners, but they both know that once Simple puts his foot down on the straights, that thing will just fly away from them until the next braking zone. Well, the two BMWs actually getting into combat, actually. That was Adrian and Ronan. I think it was a slight wiggle from Adrian and uh, was getting to the side of Ronan there side by side. So under brakes, the two brothers battling away in the BMWs and up the inside goes the E36 of Ronan past Adrian in the E46. So a move made there. Now we turn him through the left hand. Uh, that's now Martin Scott's VW Golf. Also in there, Jack Whitehead in the number three car. Dave Charlton in there too. On the Civics making their way through. And there's Mark Diaf, who's come from the back of the grid. He's also already passed uh, Jeremy Sutton. If that's right, he must be somewhere around 12th position, which is quite the start from the back of the grid, which is pretty extraordinary. That is another new fast lap for him, 2 minutes 8.117. Side by side for second now between Reynolds and Bradley. And the bid will be coming back at the Ford Anglia down towards Richie's. Can he get the undercut on the exit? He might well be able to. He'll certainly try quite make it stick there so it might be a little bit better under brakes is the BMW but that, little, that lightweight little Ford Anglia is going to really take the fight to him Adrian Bradley's dropped back a little bit he started the race without a rear bumper because he lost it in the first race uh, on that sense but uh, for all you Aussie Touring Car fans here's something that I'm sure you're enjoying right now seeing a proper bona fide Holden V8 supercar racing in the UK Mark Death, I'm sure, quite soon, will be up on the tail of these two here. It's battling over third and fourth. In fact, there he is in the background, so not too far away. He's got past Paul Watson, and now he's got the top four in his sights. Choosing all the curb and a bit more. Again, living up to the Super, whose reputation is something that a car that can tackle every terrain. Being a, a world-renowned rally car special. There goes Ronan Bradley, Adrian Bradley. There goes the... Martin Reynolds' car, and then as we come down the pit straight here, just watch the, watch the power of the Subaru. The Anglia is quick, but just watch the Subaru. It just comes charging down the straight, and up the inside, and already passed. And that is another new fastest lap for him as well. Two minutes, 6.495. We also saw some great progress from Diath as he flew through the field in his Subaru Impreza. By lap number five, he was up to fourth position right behind the two Bradleys while setting the fastest lap of the race. Adrian Ronan fought hard to keep behind the blue Subaru, but with its incredible power at the end of the straight, it would be hard for them to do so. And as was the case, after a few laps of sticking behind the BMWs, Mark could manage to squeeze past and get into second position. Depends. If, if Sibwell is quick enough, we might be able to get one more lap um, on top of the one they're about to start. So here comes Mark Diathen to turn the wick up on the turbo and past him on the straight goes Mark. And oops, that's uh, Jack Whitehead going for a spin down at the Agostini hairpin. Meanwhile, here goes Mark Diathen. Actually, Asian Bradley had a quite a good run on him down towards under Nelson but then back under brakes that those BMWs are a little bit better under brakes it seems and <laughs> Mark Diaz thought about a move up the inside into Corum that wasn't quite going to work so he's going to sit back now and hold on as for Adrian Bradley he's got more pressing matters here trying to get past his brother Ronan so inter family combat here between the two Ronan between two Bradleys and with Mark Diaz Subaru we're certainly going to turn the wick up a bit more here could get quite the battle across the line they go I think this is probably going to be the last lap of the race I think and they go three wide and past both the BMWs goes Mark Diaz charging up the inside. And here comes Adrian up the inside of Ronan. Great little battle at the end of the race here. 
So Brendan Bradley goes from second to fourth in one move. Despite the best efforts of Mark Diaz to try and close in. Good effort for the back of the grid though after he missed race one. But today in Norfolk has been a perfect day in the Norfolk countryside. For Alex Sidwell who takes a victory for the second time today in the Holden V8 supercar. He takes a victory in the Super Saloon. Second for Mark Diaz for the back of the grid. He's got to be pleased with that after his problems in race one. To not even start race one I should say. Third place foot goes to Adrian Bradley. Mark Diaz sets the fastest lap of the race on the final lap as well. Fort there's Ronan Bradley he dropped right back on the last lap of the race. So it's either a spin or a problem for him that's saw him off the road briefly. Fifth for Arthur Reynolds in the Anglia. Sixth for Paul Watts in the BMW. Ronan would have a late issue seeing him drop off the pace, but thankfully he would still finish in fourth place. Fifth place would go to Martin Reynolds. He would win Class C. Paul Watson on his return had an impressive performance all weekend. He would finish in sixth position in his BMW. Matt Rowling going even better than the first race, this time finishing seventh place in his T2 Honda Civic Type R. He would impressively beat the Super Saloon of Martin Scott, who also won Class D. Then would follow Neil Gardner, second in Tin Tops in ninth, followed by Jack Whitehead within the top ten once more. Steve Dan would finish 11th. Ken Angel would win Class T1 this time after an interesting scrap between Dave Charlton and Graham Richardson. Adrian Matthews would come from the back of the grid to finish in 15th, third within Class T2. Gideon September would finish in 16th after a better showing in the second race of the day, followed by Liam Pauling, who would this time win Class T3 after a stellar performance. I would follow him home in 18th, winning Class TP, followed by Dominic Ryan, Richard Skelsey, James Seal, second place within Class TP, Angelo Massanetto, who is third place within Class T3, and Ian Seal, who is also third position within his Class TP. Our only retirements from this one were Jeremy Sutton and Paul Restall. So a very enjoyable weekend at Snetterton, some great racing from the CMMCS and thanks to BRICC for the great hosting of the weekend and also the excellent live stream coverage as well, massively appreciated from everyone at the club for that. Thank you for watching this one and we'll be back in action on the 23rd of October for the Intermark Silhouette with the BRSCC at the Formula Ford Festival at Brands Hatch before all of the series will return to Brands Hatch for their season finale in the middle of November. So thank you all for watching, massively appreciate everyone for tuning in and we'll see you soon for another one. Goodbye.